Well, good afternoon or good evening here in the USA. And if you're overseas, it's already Saturday morning. And I am Bruce, a.k.a. known by a lot of people as the guy in the blue shirt here. And I've got my blue shirt on. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about why I wore my Manchester United one for Ian today. And also, I go by the philosophy of simpler, faster, better. And uh, I'm delighted to reintroduce Ian. Ian and I have spoken at length before um, from an introduction by Cecilia Wong. And Cecilia can't join us tonight, so she's busy with another client. So, Ian, why don't you say hi to everybody? And then we'll talk about what uh, you're up to, which is about to show off an amazing invention, right? Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Ian. I'm the president of PowerNot. We're based in Silicon Valley. And we design, develop, and manufacture all our products here and ship globally from Silicon Valley, California. Yeah, yay. Yay, yay for the valley, right? Good, good <laughs> job. <laughs> Keeping lots of people employed up in the valley, the most expensive place on the planet, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I know. So, um, yeah, tell me a little bit more about uh, a little bit of history about how you got into biodigesters and uh, then talk about why they're going to be so important, particularly as we enter the new year. And then uh, you're about to unveil your brand new machine at a trade fair soon. And uh, you're going to do a sneak preview here, as I understand it, right? So there's lots of things that we, we you said there, Bruce. Okay, so I, yeah. I, I backed into, I backed into biodigesters. Uh, I started the company PowerNot in order to do a different product. And, um, that product, we still sell that product through a different um, side uh -huh. group, but um, uh, but uh, the main focus is on the LFC Biodigester, and I was trying to sell um, my other product to the Hyatt Regency here in Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. and um, the facilities manager didn't want to buy it, and I asked him what else, um, what other kind of things uh, he might be interested in, and he took me around the back to his dumpster, and said, "Look, look here at this, um, at this dumpster with all the rats and the flies. If you can get rid of this waste food coming out here, um, mm -hmm. then that, that's a product I will buy." And two years later, we delivered it to him. He was uh, one of our first customers, uh -huh. and so we we backed into it. And um, now the uh, the original business is now is now such a very small part of of um, of what we, this company does. Right, and so now we sell the LFC Biodigester in eight different sizes, varying from uh, ten kilograms a day up to to three thousand kilograms a day. Um, have installations in five continents, uh, thousands of machines sold. Right, so. but what a what a great example there. I mean, what a well. There's a lot of uh, great examples there. Number one, go see the customer right on their own turf. Uh, number two, always ask the customer what they're looking for instead of what we might think they want, right? Yep. And then, and then way to go, you know, put your money where your mouth is and make the investment and then go back to the person that said, hey, if you could solve this problem, I will buy it. And uh, what a great commitment on PowerNot's point of view, yours personally, and um, what a great commitment from that uh, site facilities director that was looking to improve you know the way the hotel ran and and the pollution problem that it was creating right so. well yes you know you know he had he had no idea what the solution would be right um he just knew he had a problem and i didn't know how to solve the problem obviously and uh, it's like it's like everything that you do in engineering you 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 don't know what the answer is <laughs> you, right. you have to sit there and scratch your head and then you know, uh, years later, you look at it and everything seems simple. You explain it to people now yeah. and you say, OK, here's a machine that will eat your eat your waste food. Uh, but when we when we started to try and sell it to people, they looked at us as if we had come from Mars. Um, <laughs> but now now it's a little bit uh, more commonplace. Um, uh, everybody is aware that that sending waste food to a landfill is tremendously bad for the planet. Right. Um, tremendously bad for the environment. Sending uh, it creates huge amounts of, of methane, 
Mm -hmm. uh, and that that is 87 times worse for the atmosphere than carbon dioxide. Right. And so we've got to get the methane out of the um, out of the, the world. And that, that was a big focus at the COP26 uh, that Biden was pushing to get the methane out of the, the uh, out of the landfills and out of the air. I mean, there's lots of sources of it. Right. Um, but here in California, uh, methane turns out to be uh, the third largest, uh, sorry, the, the landfill methane is the third largest source of methane in California. Oh, uh, wow. So it's so it's a terrible it's a terrible thing. We've got to get it out and we've got to sort it out and, and clean up the planet. Absolutely. All right. Well, I want to welcome some people. Your uh, trusted uh, Cecilia Wong. Hi, Cecilia. She said she was going to hop on. Hey, Philip Davis. Philip Davis is a young up and coming leader. Mr. Tom Baker, who I spoke to last night, he has a true blue through and through passion for racing and race car drivers as i do and then bonita lee who's a relatively new connection too she's into actually a lot of compliance things so uh, we have a great mixed audience here uh, ian and yes i was uh, i was blown away when i first started talking with you and cecilia about um, the amount of methane gas that landfills produce and not only that, the fact that it's so high on the tally, and I believe the methane that comes from landfill, it's still either equal to or higher than all of the aviation fuel pollution for methane. Is that correct? Yes, or that's correct. It causes it causes um, greater greater environmental impact uh, than aviation. Yeah, it doesn't absolutely. mean that we shouldn't make aviation. Uh, more economical or that we should all fly less but uh, it's uh, it's certainly a great pollutant right well the pandemic took care of that but i'm i'm pretty certain the pandemic did not take care of the amount of food that was going in the landfill in fact i believe statistically it probably went up right because there yes was a lot yeah i mean over the past pandemic over the past couple of years it's all gone up um and and you know we're and and what's made it worse is that that there are laws coming into effect. Uh, so mm -hmm. there's laws coming into effect in in um, January the first for for New York and January the first for for California mm -hmm. to to ban the organic material from going to the landfill. Mm -hmm. um, and so yes, it's uh, so that's created awareness for us, right. um, but. Our initial target customer and the, the ones you immediate, immediately think of are restaurants and hotels and, mm -hmm. and to a lesser extent, corporate cafeteria and all of those, the restaurants and hotels have all been hit right. badly over the last uh, 20 months or so. Um, corporate cafeteria have become sparse. Right. And so so there, there's lots of new markets where, where we are present and where we are certainly uh, making inroads. Um, right. as, as the hotels come back and as the restaurants come back, then, yeah, it becomes more important for us to reach these people and tell right. them there's an alternative to sending waste food to the landfill. Well, I, I'm pretty creative about cross-introducing people. So, Tom, I know Tom visits a lot of racing circuits, like car racing circuits, and I know they consume a lot of food there. So uh, offline, uh, once I get to know Tom a little better, perhaps we can... Talk with him about, um, you know, all of the big racetrack uh, folks that he might know, because that would be another great place, particularly for the smaller machines. Uh, and, you know, you never know. Uh, I know they try to be socially and economically responsible or eco-friendly, at, at least all the racetracks I go to. So I think it's a, probably a good fit for you. So Yes, yes. We, we have machines in several stadia around the world. Right. Um, uh, as a, for example, I see you wearing the Manchester <laughs> shirt there. Um, you know, right. we, we put a machine into Manchester Airport just recently, and um, we just put a couple into Aston Villa Football Club, which is just right. down the road from from Manchester. So, um, right. yeah, so, so, so we have them in Stadia in the US as well, of course. Right. So if anyone knows somebody at Liverpool Football Club, uh, that actually is their uh, logo, LFC. Well, it just happens to be. <laughs> Ian's, to be. <laughs> Ian's machines are called LFC and whatever size model is afterwards. So if anyone knows somebody at Liverpool Football Club or knows somebody that knows somebody, then they need to introduce 
them to Ian because Ian would love to put his LFC machines into Liverpool Football Club. And I'm sure if that happened, uh, Manchester United Football Club would be right behind them because there's a <laughs> lot, of, lot of competition there for people that may or may not know about the English soccer scene. So, um, so good for you, man. So, yes. Oh. Yeah. So maybe you could do a cute, you know, little commercial about, you know, soccer and uh, yeah. But you, but you see, the, the, these clubs, um, then I, when when our distributor in, in in the UK talked to me about it, I said, but uh, there's only two teams. Why do they have 14 <laughs> restaurants on the site? <laughs> Four, 14, 14, they got 14 chefs and 14 restaurants on the site at Aston Villa Football Club. Uh, oh, because good. they're creating so many events right and um, it's not just the teams that need feeding it's all the executives that go to the yeah to the stands uh, um, their yeah. booths private booths and all this and right stuff. and it's funny tom tom baker and i were talking about that very point last night that people don't realize you know when you go to a road course or a circuit not so much a street circuit but when you go to a big event or a big arena there are thousands of people are working on a pretty tight schedule and all in synchronization to make that all happen. And, and largely speaking, pub, the public, they're using the arena or going to the facility. They're, they're clueless about all of the complexity behind the supply chain and just all of the logistics that have to occur to make that event run, let alone yeah. you know, all the teams there as well. That's another big big topic so yeah anyway so so yeah lots of interesting stuff and uh and again i've seen some of bonita stuff she's commenting as well you know some of the things that bonita covers in the whole compliance world is you know we're we're most of people like myself and the rest of the general public we're clueless about what happens to make sure we get product and services and processes all in place that you know keep us legal and keep us safe so you know no, another great example right yes <laughs> yes all right so uh i know you're pretty excited about what you're gonna unveil in hamburg are you like to share that with us yes so so uh you know we talked earlier about about getting on a plane so i'm getting on a plane for the first time in 20 months we have right. uh, an important trade show in hamburg maritime forum Mm -hmm. um, we're unveiling our LFC 25 biodigester there. This is a biodigester capable of, of eating somewhere between 10 kilograms and 75 kilograms a day. Right. Um, it, it's a small biodigester, so it's a huge shift in, in technology from all of our other biodigesters. Our other biodigesters are all big, pretty big. Right. And and they all they all up to date to now have relied on using an AC motor to drive the shaft and the paddles and the arms. Mm -hmm. And uh, they all drain naturally to a grade level drain. So they're in, intended for installation in a industrial or commercial kitchen where right. there is a ground level drain. Um, mm -hmm. The 25 is, is the size of a residential dishwasher, 600 by 600 millimeters by 880 tall, oh. can can fit underneath the counter. And it, ha it it's designed for places where there is not necessarily a grade level drain, such oh. as our own um, kitchen here in our facility, right. where yeah. our staff can deposit their waste food from lunch or breakfast into it. And um, they bring their own their waste food from home as well to keep it going. Oh, um, really? Cool. <laughs> and, and of course, we don't. We this is not a commercial kitchen. We're a manufacturing facility, so we don't have a grade level drain. And so the output, the waste output from the machine is pumped into into the sink in the same way as a residential dishwasher pumps it into the sink plumbing. Awesome. And um, so it, it's a big change from us. It's got this pumping into it, fitting everything, fitting all, all the complexity into there is very different. And, and we've gone away from the AC induction motor that we've used on all of our previous machines. And we're using a DC BLDC motor with totally different drive 
on it, lots of software, lots of hardware to make it all small and fit and compact. Compact. So a big, a big, a big change from all of our big machines. A, a huge, huge engineering challenge for everybody in terms of plumbing, mechanics, electronics, drive, ever, everything uh, is, is a big right, change. Absolutely. So Bonita said, is bio, bio uh, digester? Yeah. So maybe um, to us non-techies, so maybe you can explain what a bio digester actually does and what its advantages are. And uh, Cecilia is chiming in as well. So thanks. Yeah. Uh, Cecilia has got a lot of information too. So if you're seeing Cecilia in the live stream, you want to connect with her and you have an interest uh, learning more, then she is very knowledgeable as well. So yeah, dumb, dumb it down for us, Ian. Or dumb, dumb it, it down. Well, <laughs> well, the biodigester is, is a machine that will eat waste food. Anybody who is producing food for any anything is going yeah. to have waste food, whether or not it's it's just potato peelings. I mean, if you prepare a pineapple, you've got 50% waste with the skin and the head, you've got 50% right. waste. If you're preparing meat, you've got the fatty bits that you don't serve to the customers. And right. so everybody who's preparing food has got, has got waste. And typically what's been happening is people have been sending that waste to the landfill. Right. When it goes to the landfill, it gets buried on the landfill. And it creates methane uh, among an, a bunch of other nasty, horrible, smelly gases. Right. That's why nobody wants a landfill in their backyard. Um, what our biodigester is, is it's a big stainless steel stomach. It just digests <laughs> that waste food, um, converting everything to water in the same way as our own stomach in some ways, um, and sending the waste as water, gray water, down the drain. Right. And so... It, it saves, uh, it is an aerobic process. Mm -hmm. So it's digesting in the presence of oxygen. It is uh, the same as, the, as a natural degradation of organic material in a forest. When the right. leaves of the trees of the forest fall onto the forest floor, they're decomposed or digested in the presence of oxygen and it doesn't smell. Mm -hmm. And the inside of our machine doesn't smell, so we don't need any deodorizer for our machine at all. Um, if you put your head deep into a, into one of our machines, at worst, it will smell like stewed carrots or something. Okay. Um, so there's no smell associated with it. The machine sits in the kitchen. Uh, it sits where the waste food is generated. Uh, it, it avoids having to put the stuff into plastic bags, put it into bins, uh, push it outside into the into the dump and dump it into right. the dump pay for someone to take it to a landfill and the environmental consequences of doing that so yeah. it greatly improves the the carbon footprint of the business or entity using it it reduces their costs it saves them money it improves operations and um and all around it is, is a very very good machine we as right. i said earlier we have thousands of machines installed uh, on five continents uh, and right. um, most major cities throughout the globe are now using our machines. Right. So it seems to me like, so my fast tip would be if you want to look at an end-to-end -end supply chain saving, if you make it simpler and faster and better, then imagine what can happen. So, you know, so that's, uh, so people might say, well, Bruce, you know, why are you, why are you intrigued in these biodigesters and power not? Well, once I learned what you were doing, it it's like a no-brainer to me. It's simpler and it's faster and it's better. And it's just, uh, you know, economically and ergonomically and eco ecologically. I mean, why wouldn't you want to make an improvement in a process like that? I mean, so. well, obviously, obviously, you know, the, the machine costs money. Um, sure. and, yeah. and so the, there is either a capital expense or, or there is a... Um, we arrange leasing uh, in, in the U.S. Um, mm -hmm. There's a leasing expense. Uh, but oftentimes, um, if you lease it, for example, the cost of the lease per month right. is less than the cost of the trash collection that you were previously paying. And so yeah. the money, machine's going to save money on the day it's installed. Right. Um, obviously, somebody has to find kitchen space in the kitchen or, or in the ware washing, the dishwashing area. Um, that's another place where they're commonly installed. Mm -hmm. um, 
and so so you have objections like that and, and um yeah a lot of people want to save the planet um but it, it's it's not it's not obligatory to have for a um for a kitchen you know you you need a sink you need a dishwasher you need a refrigerator and you need a stove um but people don't know they need a sink a dishwasher a refrigerator stove and a biodigester and, and that's the message that we're 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 getting out to the the larger public right and specifically they need the uh what size one again the, <laughs> well the uh, lfc 25 oh, is is the one for the small piece of all who who, who who don't have much waste. Of course, it's very popular. Um, it's one of the the the, um, the trade show that we're going to in Hamburg is uh -huh. a marine trade show. Right. Um, we've been very successful installing our biodigesters onto mega yachts. Right. Um, and and there is there is a certain gentleman who started a a store that originally sold books. Mm -hmm. who has announced that he's going to build a 500 million dollar yacht and oh, no, no. and our biodigester is designed into that yacht and so um so yes they, it's a big market for for us on the yachts uh, mm -hmm. the, the marine world has a lot of problems with waste food right and um it is now mandatory that every cruise ship uh, sailing in u.s waters must have a biodigester right. and we have sold hundreds of biodigesters to cruise ships um cruise ship companies uh cruise ships that are operating in u.s waters and indeed in the mediterranean as well awesome. so um so yes we've been very successful in the marine business we're very successful with the yachting business and so we're going to the trade show in hamburg taking the lfc 25 um that's a popular size for the smaller yachts when i say smaller yachts the, <laughs> you know the 50 meters or so um uh, right. not not ones that you or i could afford bruce right. but, uh, exactly. <laughs> but but the bigger yachts um have got have got some of our bigger machines right and actually it's interesting because i also had a visual when things do start to open up again probably in 22 i'm sure but uh you know the whole how do you deal with the food waste from you know parks and recreational facilities whether they have a stadium or not so i mean there's there's so many opportunities to really improve uh how we manage our footprint you know with the escape of methane gas and also you know how many opportunities we could you know put out there to introduce people to the technology because again until i met cecilia and you i had I was clueless that there was even a technology that could solve a really big problem and a really big latent problem that's brewing up unless we deal with it. So, well, you know, I mean, the, the, there are there are other alternatives to to using our machine uh, instead of putting it onto the landfill. And I, I tell everybody, you know, if you can compost the waste food locally. Uh -huh. By locally, I mean, you know, within a mile or so, uh, you're not trucking it hundreds of miles. Right. And if you can, if you can then use it locally to produce fruit and vegetables, and again, I mean, within a mile or so, not hundreds of miles away, um, that's ten out of ten every time. Right. If you're if you're having to truck it hundreds of miles to a commercial facility, uh, and then truck the compost that comes from that hundreds of miles to where right. it can be put right. onto a, onto a field, that's not good for the environment and. Um, you know, right. so there's no silver bullet to getting rid of, of organic waste. And the right. same way, anaerobic digestion, you know, I mean, as we talked about, you know, you take the organic waste and you bury it on the landfill, you get methane. Okay, well, then the simple answer is we can take this organic waste and we can have it decompose in the absence of oxygen. And we've got we've got methane that we can then use for for cooking and, and or, or generating electricity. Mm -hmm. through a turbine okay well it, it sounds simple just like a uh, nuclear power tie it sounds simple you know we take these two atoms and we put them together and we've got huge amounts of energy and then but by the time you want to build a nuclear power station it's boom it's a it's a <laughs> mega big thing and yeah. if you want to build an anaerobic digestion facility it's a huge great big thing which costs you 
tens of, of millions of dollars to build the facility and nobody wants that in their backyard so it's hundreds of miles away from anywhere as well right and you've got the same problem you had with compost it's it's right. not not good for the planet it's not it's not the best answer for the planet and uh, so yeah. um yeah there's no there's no easy answer to getting rid of of the organic waste unfortunately right. but hey there's at least a stepping stone with uh you know at least being open-minded to a biodigester, no matter how and which way you... Yeah, choose. you know, the uh, the biodigester is going to get an 8 or 9 out of 10 every time, wherever you install it. You right. know, we... Um, we have we have many customers who are on resort islands. So we have resort mm -hmm. islands um, off, off the shores of North America. We have resort islands in, in the Maldives. We have resort right. islands in the Great Barrier Reef. One island in the Great Barrier Reef has got six of our machines on one island. Wow. And, um, you know, that there's an ecologically friendly environment, right? So what, what can they do with their, with their organic waste, right? You know, they, they put it on a boat and they, they can take it to the shore. <laughs> and that, that's tremendously expensive. Um, yeah. some, some resort islands take it, take it out at sea and just dump the whole stuff. They call it marine feeding, which is dreadful for the planet, dreadful for the environment. Uh, yeah. But um, so, yeah, the, there are places where there are very, very few alternatives to, to ours, or at least the alternatives that have existed up to the time we come along are pretty poor. Right. Well, cool. Well, let's uh, see if we can start uh, more of a mission around what you're doing. So um, if, you have connections that are in the Hamburg region, then uh, what? What is, tell us a little bit about the dates of the show and the opening times. And uh, the show is the fourth, and no, it's the. It's, 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 we fly out on Friday, the one, two, third and fourth, third and fourth of December. Oh, okay, and, cool. Uh, and so, so I, I think I got that right. Let me just check my calendar here. Sure. So, Celia uh, will put you right. Yeah, she she'll put me it's right. It's in a yeah. pretty large uh, convention center in. It's the th th sorry, it's the thirtieth and the first okay. in, in Hamburg. Yeah, at, at the um, Marine Plaza. Uh, right. in, in Hamburg. So a lot of cruise ship operators, yacht operators, um, um, a lot of, of the container ship operators, right. uh, oil rig operators uh, should all be there. All right. Hi, Elise. So we've got some great connections I've not seen for a while. So thanks for hopping on, Elise. And uh, I know she's very... Uh, planet environmentally friendly as well so um yeah so that's november 30th and december 1st in uh, hamburg so again if you happen to have any connections or people in the uh regions or this uh businesses that ian has mentioned prior to and if you if you miss them i'll, I'll have him do a final shout out here that where his machines or are really a good fit for biodigesting. We we have we have a very very important announcement. First thing in the new year, Bruce. Oh, I would love love to love to tell you. I'd love to tell you about it now, but I'd have to shoot you. <laughs> and everyone teaser, on this call. Teaser. Now you're just lining yourself up to come back on the first of the new year, right? First of the year, yes. Yeah, first of the new year, right? Okay, why not? I'll I'll have you back anytime because uh, number one, I'm. I'm very passionate about uh, at least the mission of what you're doing. And uh, again, to me, it's just fits right in line with my thinking. Why not make the end to end issue of dealing with waste food, you know, simpler, faster, better and everybody wins. And, and it's about, you know, cleaning up the process. I mean, I'm all about process cleanup and I love the fact that you guys are really aggressively going after cleaning up the whole process of dealing with food waste so i mean it to me it just fits right in my genre so i'm always happy to talk to you and always happy to work with cecilia to help make this happen so no problem good thank you bruce all right so yeah just uh give us a highlight what industries for people that might be tuning in late what industries are a good fit for uh the use of your biodigesters or if you would like to reach out, reach out to Cecilia Wong here. She's very active on LinkedIn and uh, uh, 
will be very responsive to any inquiries or guidance that you might be able to give give her in terms of people that uh, need to be introduced to power knot so yeah so 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 um any any industry that that's producing large amounts of of waste food our machines will digest um anywhere from 10 kilograms up to up to 3000 kilograms a per day. day per day per day oh wow all right good yeah. all right and then but, obviously... but not residential uh, no, only commercial <laughs> only commercial okay yeah. well you never know maybe uh, some point in the future the baby machine will be going to people's kitchens you know well you know we have we have a, a um sheikh's palace in the middle east mm -hmm. and and he has an lfc 1000 oh, 1, cool. 1000 kilograms of waste food in his personal residence every day oh my goodness imagine how many people he has on staff <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe the animals are eating a bunch. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Crazy, huh? Crazy. That's a, yeah. a thousand kilos a day. Yes. Yeah. Wow. That must be. A, have you been to the palace? That's why I want to know. <laughs> only, only from the outside. I, 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 they don't allow people like me to go in. Oh, <laughs> ding, dong. ding dong. Ian here. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm here to check on your biodigestion. Yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> Go, go take a walk in the desert, right? Yeah, <laughs> something like that, I think. <laughs> right. Actually, I've been in that environment. I actually have a Sudanese brother-in-law, and I spent some time um, behind the scenes, as it were. So I, oh. I have a unique perspective that a person from a Western country got to spend some time in the old city of Jeddah, which is oh, wow. very, very anti-Western world. So Yes. Yeah, so uh, I have many stories about that adventure. So, <laughs> <laughs> and many watch out moments about what not to do. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I literally almost got myself shot, literally, for doing the wrong thing at the wrong time without knowing I was doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. So, anyway, they dealt with my problem, which is they got rid of me. Yeah. <laughs> I was happy to leave that environment. So no, I imagine so. I, I uh, when when they said, "Don't worry, we'll send an armed guard to the airport to meet you. It'll be safe." That was right. the point where I decided that <laughs> I didn't really need to go and visit. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I've been in that environment too. I used to work in a pretty poor neighborhood in Mexico, and our plant manager was an American guy, and he was under he was under constant security with AK forty sevens because of the whole risk of you know absconding him for a ransom so yeah that is pretty weird when you i went to his house for supper one night and you know you go to the gate and there are literally four or six guys with ak-47s you know and they strip search you almost before you can even go in for dinner so it's wow. yeah strange we we take for granted our freedom for sure we uh, do indeed all right. Well, awesome job and uh, awesome review of what you've got coming up. And uh, thanks for teasing me about the next new announcement in the new year. So we'll have to have you back for that. And again, um, I'm just going to hang on a minute. I'm just going to do a little um, opportunity to do a little plug here for myself, a little bit about what I do. So hang on and see, it, see if you like my... So... What if your processes do not work well? Did you know you can save or eliminate massive amounts of wasted steps, time, money, or other resources? Bruce can show or teach you how. Take the next step. Visit his website at processcleanup.com and book a casual yet confidential call with Bruce. It just might change your world forever. Hey, there we go. See, process. Oh, that. That's very good. <laughs> yeah. I don't know who that unrecognizable guy is with the tie at the back, though. <laughs> you mean the last slide? That guy yes. with that stiff upper lip and that yeah. uh, very sh crisp blue shirt. <laughs> that's right. That was me. <laughs> Can't be anybody we know. <laughs>
Yeah, well, good to have you, man. Uh, safe travels over there. And um, if anyone has uh, questions or would like to refer uh, people to talk to uh, Power Knot or Ian or uh, Cecilia's in the live feed here. So you can, if you're watching this as a replay, you can reach out to Cecilia. She would love to talk with you more. And if you do have connections in Hamburg or the Hamburg, Germany area, have them have them go over and say, meet Ian and Cecilia in person on November 30th and December 1st. Mate, thanks a lot, everybody. All right, thanks. Bye. Hang on there, Ian. Bye.